In thinking about standards, we need to consider two key dimensions, input standards and output standards. Let's start with the output standards, or in other words, the performance standards. What are we expecting cities to do? And the first thing we need cities to do is to keep us safe. And of course, the coronavirus puts this aspect of urban performance into sharp focus. But safety has always been a concern for as long as we've had cities. Safety against fire, against flood, and of course, against attack. Now let's consider the input standards, the design standards to address safety. Whereas fire, flooding, and attack have typically required physical measures, brick replacing timber construction after the Great Fire of London, for example, and flood defences protecting low-lying places from the sea, the coronavirus places a requirement on spatial measures, on ventilation standards, which may lead to better mechanical air filtration, but may equally equate to the opening up of architectural facades, from windows to entire ground floor frontages, thus blurring the relationship between public and private space. I think this offers exciting opportunities for designers. Another spatial input is street connectivity, which of course is measured by space syntax tools. Spatial connectivity matters because it influences the way we move whether, for example, we choose healthier options such as walking and cycling. The healthier we are, the better we can defend ourselves against viral attack. And when it comes to standards, this is something we're working on at Space Syntax. For example, minimum levels of spatial connectivity, so that people are given the opportunity to walk and cycle. They may not always choose to do so, but if those minimum levels are not there, they have no choice and instead have to drive. Of course, making cities safe is not the only performance requirement of cities. We also need to make cities convivial, thriving with frequent informal social contacts between people. And the way we've learned to make this happen is first by slowing down to walking speed and then by mixing land uses such that everyday destinations are closer to home by as far as possible removing the dull daily commute that confines people to antisocial and unhealthy sedentary behaviors in the same way that we can measure spatial connectivity so we can measure the degree to which people are close to each other and to everyday land uses, and are therefore likely to walk more. Indeed, we've created the Walkability Index to provide a tool for urban planners to check current levels of walkability and measure proposed levels in future plans. By studying towns and cities across the world, we're learning about the levels of land use mix and spatial connectivity that make the difference between a community that walks more or walks less. And this means we can set standards that need to be achieved in new designs. Now you may think that surely we need less social contact because of the coronavirus, not more. But this is when we need to remember the fundamental performance of cities, which is to generate social and economic transactions that lead to new ideas and new inventions that help us solve the greatest problems of our time, that help us to create great works of art, that attract the most ambitious and skilled people, and that nurture our cultures. As vaccinations and other measures help reduce the risk of coronavirus infection, we will need our cities to be more convivial than they have ever been. This has always been the case. After fires, floods, and attacks of all kinds, we keep building cities in order to connect people together. 
because we recognize the power of connected places. What new technologies, such as those we're creating at Space Syntax, can do is to lock in the performance standards that drive the movement and interaction patterns that foster the processes of invention and innovation that make cities the greatest inventions of humanity.